Hi, Anya. Stay home. That's how serious they are in Vietnam. All of the telecoms, right next to their brand on your mobile, says, Hi, Anya. Stay home. That's how serious they are here. Cannot miss it. In front of you all the time. I'm just waiting for my ban mi. Then I'm going back in. Time for lunch. So it's interesting to watch what's happening right now between what's going on in the West with COVID-19 and what's been happening in the East with COVID-19. And it seems lately that people, either leaders or doctors, are starting to come around to think or thinking that maybe it's not such a bad idea for people to wear masks in public. Now, I totally understand that there is a real concern right now to make sure that healthcare workers, the frontline people that are trying to help people that have COVID-19, have a proper N95 style mask. But the thing is, not everybody needs an N95 mask. If people that are out in the public have just a regular type of surgical mask, possibly even a cloth mask, I don't know how effective they are at working. The idea here is to prevent you from carrying the virus or spreading the virus to somebody else. The mask itself is not necessarily going to protect you from getting the virus, but if you're a carrier and you don't know you're a carrier, but you're wearing a mask, you're less likely to pass on that virus in most cases. At least that's how it seems to work in Asia. So all you have to do to see that wearing a face mask works is just you know, start talking or start talking loud towards a mirror and see how much little spittle or spray uh, leaves uh, your mouth and hits the mirror. Now, if you're wearing a face mask, I mean, obviously that's going to cut down on that spray or that spittle, or especially if you sneezed or coughed, than if you weren't wearing anything at all. So the idea behind wearing a face mask is to protect others from you, not necessarily protect you from catching the virus. So it can't be this kind of loosey-goosey volunteer thing. It's got to be mandatory, and a place like CDC has got to get behind it. Other places are getting behind it, like Los Angeles seems to be uh, getting on board with it and telling all of their people to wear a mask if they want to go out in public. I mean, if they can get people to do this in highly densely populated areas like New York City, I'm sure it's going to help contain or at least help to contain COVID-19. But you got to get people wrapped around the fact that, look, you're wearing it so that if you're asymptomatic, if you're carrying the virus, you're not going to pass it on to others. So we got to get everybody on board with this. Now, that's a monumental task in a place like the United States to get 350 million people to wear a mask overnight. It's not going to happen. But if you start out in these huge metropolitan areas or big cities, uh, densely populated places like New York City, it's a good start. As a Westerner living in Asia right now, I find it actually incredibly frustrating to watch how the West is kind of stumbling through this whole thing with containing COVID-19 when there's places here in East Asia and Southeast Asia, Taiwan, South Korea, Vietnam, even China that could lend their services, could lend their expertise and help. I mean, even for people to come here and look and see for themselves how they're handling the situation. I mean, they don't even have to come here to do that. It's, there's lots of ways where knowledge can be shared and expertise can be shared. But I find it incredibly frustrating right now. And I don't know if it's a pride thing or an ego thing, why the West isn't coming to the East and looking for more help and advice. I mean, these people have lots of experience dealing with SARS. They applied that to the current situation here right now. And that knowledge and expertise could be easily shared and utilized in the West. Maybe not all of it is transferable, but a lot of it could be used and utilized right now. It's really frustrating to see from this perspective what's going on. I'm just having a simple dinner tonight. This is Kom Tapkam 
and uh, that's this is a mixed vegetarian rice. So there's these gong chai places all over Vietnam, and uh, typically the price is anywhere from ten thousand to maybe even up to fifty thousand for uh, a plate or these takeaway boxes of uh, mixed vegetables, uh, fake meats. Usually they're made from uh, gluten, wheat gluten, uh, and tofu. And this is places close by here. This is this was thirty thousand, so that's uh, like a dollar thirty or something like that. So they're really inexpensive. You can spend up to two or three dollars. And then there's these vegetarian buffet places you can go to as well in Vietnam that are amazing, and they have like a huge variety of this. But the key is when when you go to these smaller places. You want to make sure you can choose what you want. They have like a table with a whole bunch of trays full of different things. You, the trick is you got to make sure you get the vegetables as well. Don't let them just pile on the gluten because that's not, you know, it's okay. But you want to get some veggies in there too. So I always pick vegetables first and then add a little bit of the sort of fake meats and stuff after. And this is really good. Now the comb, the rice that they use here is actually the, the traditional for these places, the rice and meat or rice and veg is the broken rice. And uh, it's almost has kind of a couscous texture to it. It's the byproduct of the rice processing. So it's all the little leftover bits when they're processing the rice. And it's actually quite tasty. And traditionally, you use a spoon to eat this with, or a fork and spoon, not chopsticks. Mm. This is really good. I don't know if you are, but I'm a big fan and follower of Eckhart Tolle. And I was just watching one of his latest videos about how people use food to distract themselves from things like if they're sad, of course, or they're stressed out. I mean, it's natural for people to find distractions. Some are far more harmful than others, but I mean, whenever you overdo anything, it's not good. And, um, you know, being in this situation kind of cooped up here, like a lot of us are right now, it's really easy to kind of use food for a distraction. So I purposely just pick simple things on some nights to have like a, a meal like this. Uh, because it'd be really easy to just order food. You can order all kinds of food from here and pizzas and all kinds of stuff. But, uh, you know, I don't want to, you know, if I'm not feeling well or sad or happy or claustrophobic or lonely because I'm cooped up here, I don't want to use food as a distraction. I uh, have always been a big wine, beer and food lover. And... Uh, I've always wanted to preserve that. I never wanted it to be more than just the enjoyment of it and not to be used or abused for anything else. So um, I don't have any, like, I, I, it's easy to grab chips and things like that. I don't keep stuff like that around, not too much anyways. And, uh, but I might order a little treat later and I will share that with you. It's so good. So in Hanoi, they've gotten a little more stricter on this stay home order right now and that they've actually closed some public places because they were finding that people were still going out and exercising at the parks and getting close to other people on walks. So I imagine if they haven't already done it here in Ho Chi Minh, they will do that soon as well because the whole idea behind this whole stay at home order was to obviously contain the COVID-19 virus, prevent it from spreading. And you're only supposed to go out for necessities, emergencies, food, you know, the things that you absolutely have to go out for. So it's not exactly in line with, uh, you know, like uh, going to the parks in the morning for walks and meeting up with people is not exactly in line with uh, the current situation here. Hello. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I have no idea what he said, but I just said okay. Okay, this treat. I'm just waiting for this treat right now. There he is. Okay, I'm going to share with you this dessert. 
I just saw somebody on LinkedIn share this totally clever do-it-yourself face shield. He used uh, <laughs> one of those clear dividers that you put in a notebook and like a, 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 a girl's headband and he wove this headband into the openings of this uh, clear divider and made it into a face shield that stuck on his forehead. It was absolutely amazing. I'm so um, inspired by some of the people out there that are doing these uh, do-it-yourself face masks and things. I mean, anything is going to help right now. But the key is, is we got to get as many people out there wearing masks as possible. So this is what I ordered. This is jackfruit stuffed with sticky rice. And then you have this little bit of coconut cream and it looks like it's flavored with pandan leaf. So I really like this dessert. I've had it a few times here in Ho Chi Minh. And uh, I can't wait to have it. I haven't had dessert in a couple nights. Sometimes they do this just right where all you have to do just have to make sure you grab the top here so you don't have coconut cream spraying everywhere. Perfect, they did that perfect, the elastic perfect. Little pouch. And uh, just gonna, wait a minute, let's see if I can uh, show you this. I'm gonna pour it right on. Look at that. Perfect. It's not a very big dessert. It's four pieces here. <laughs> mm. Yeah. I love these desserts because they're sweet, but not cloyingly sweet. They're not too sweet. And you still taste the fruit. This is great. And there's some peanuts they've got in here as well. So a little bit of a peanut topping. I'll share a few more of these types of things that I like while I'm doing these logs here. While I'm cooped up. And then one day, maybe, I will go back outside. And actually go to the places that make these things and do some videos from there. That was really good. Hey, thanks so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, thumbs up, please. Daryl Bibby, Dylan Edwards, Stephen Smith, Joseph Fritz, thank you so much for your generosity and your support, your donations, your pledges. I really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. If you want to support the channel and this video series, The COVID Diaries from here in Vietnam and me, uh, three simple ways to do it. Just check out the video description below, either one-off or one-time pledges or a pledge per month. Either way, I'm super grateful for anything. Thanks again for your support. Please stay healthy, stay safe, stay at home. We'll get through this.